10-day girls trip itinerary to Tokyo. I flew alone from Singapore and Mel came from Sydney and we both landed at night at Haneda Airport. We decided to grab a quick dinner at this nice udon place called Suro Ton Tan. It was pretty affordable and we rated 8.3 a point 10. It's 11pm and we're heading to Shinjuku where our hotel is. Mega L because it was raining and we had to lug all our luggages up these staircases because we couldn't find a lift. But luckily, we met this kind guy who helped us bring our luggages all the way to our hotel. If not, I don't think we would have survived the hill up. And luckily, he didn't steal our luggages. <laughs> oh, and we're staying at Shinjuku Grand Bell Hotel. So we got an economy double room. So there is this one double bed and the whole room size is 161 square feet. It's really small but the whole layout is super efficient. While Mel is helping to clean our luggages, let me just give a fast tour of the room. So this is the toilet and then we could actually fit both our big luggages on the bench which I was super impressed by. We stayed here for 4 nights to explore the west side of Tokyo and it was $167 per night. After bathing at all, it was 3am, yes, so good night! Good morning! Wow, the Tokyo rain a bit irritating because it's like those kind that takes them long to stop. I really love the transparent umbrellas that the hotels let us use because I mean it's so aesthetic. Now we are heading to Harajuku. This is the Takeshita street entrance and we decided to queue for some donuts first. But wow, you see the queue damn long. All this for a donut. It better be good now. <laughs> if not, you become a donut. <laughs> so this shop is called I'm Donut and the Google reviews is actually quite bad for this place but let's see. We got the original fresh donut for 260 yen. You can opt for the non-fresh one, I think it's cheaper. And we also got the pistachio donut which is 500 yen. Mel is now stuffing her face with the original donut. This is like very empty inside. This How does it taste? It's fluffy and <laughs> and delicious. <laughs> Round two. Round two. This, this is pistachio. Oh, shoot. Wait, wait. Yummy, yummy. So, which one do you prefer? Looks like double the price, eh? You must take price into account. Oh, it's very hard. <laughs> also, it's also nice, lah. The donut is not. This is a different donut. It's the same, but if we add the filling, it makes this glow. Soggy, yeah? Not soggy, yeah. That's what. We went to Gyukatsu Motomura Harajuku branch, and since we were very early, we were like first in line. This place is quite popular, there's like several branches around Tokyo and it can get pretty crowded so it's best if you arrive early for lunch or so dinner. Small. I also heard that it's really good in some branches while for other branches it's not as good so I guess it also really depends on your luck for that day. 
we got the smaller set which is just one beef cutlet and it's 1630 yen for 130 grams of the beef cutlet if you're very hungry you can upgrade to get like one and a half cutlets or two cutlets but of course it's more expensive the beef is served raw so please remember to cook them the whole experience is like yakiniku like or yakiniku go in singapore just that it feels more atas and as you can see mel is very good in flipping and cooking the beef overall it was pretty good but it wasn't like wow good so we rated like 7.8 a point 10. We finish our lunch and it's not raining. So Yay, happy. first time in Tokyo that it's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining on me. And the wind was so strong and our umbrella was destroyed. Our next stop is Tokyo Plaza, which is like famous for all the mirrors and the escalators, and it's mainly to I guess take pictures and videos. Yeah, so that's what Mel and I are gonna do, and we're gonna just show you some like maybe tips of how you can take your video. So you can take the person going down, uh, the person coming up, uh, then you can also take the person one going down, one coming up. <laughs> yeah, la, Mel is the prettiest. La. So after that, we just went to like New Balance to check out like some of the shoes because we really like New Balance. It's like the trend nowadays, I don't know why. We really saw this shoe that we like. The code number is like 725 and we actually bought it on like our last few days in Tokyo. Yeah, then we just strolled through Takeshita Street. This street is actually known for like their crepes, the hipster culture and also the cotton candy from Totti's Candy, I think. We didn't get the cotton candy because I mean sugar la, don't want la. Then we went to see some gacha porn. I mean, Mel loves gacha porn, and this place like look damn colorful, damn nice to take video and pictures. And the second floor has some useful stuff like plastic bag. Then there's this big Daiso here, but we didn't bother going. Wow, then we went for some ultra plastic surgery transformation at Purikura photo booth. There were so many photo booths, and mostly girls were here. I mean, if got guy here, a bit sus behavior. La. You see the photo, then you'll know why. This was like super good stomach muscle workout because the photos look damn ridiculous. Really damn funny, sia. And this was like the hardest we laughed in Tokyo. If you want to catfish someone, this is the best place to go. You can make your eyes damn big and your nose smaller than small. Wow, wow, what is this? Do I recognize? This thing. What, you want darker? Yeah, I want, no, I want lighter. Lighter. Okay, but for just 500 yen, for a good laugh and for some okay photos, it was quite worth. There were also many pet cafes here, like there was a pig cafe or a hedgehog cafe, but we didn't really have time for those. <laughs> Look how crowded the street is, and we were so overdressed because it was like damn hot. It was sunny now. We're now heading to our next place, but Mel Things needs to time. strip first. We are now heading to Meiji Jingu. It's very walkable from Harajuku and at the entrance there's this big Tori gate. <laughs> That's inappropriate behavior in a shrine. <laughs> so you can hang your prayers here and this is the main shrine. They're going to Yoyogi but I think it's still bald like Mel. Excuse me. <laughs> On the way, Mel decided to get a drink and the vending machines here are like super affordable. Oh my gosh, this is what I expected. Why? This is matcha latte. Yes, yeah. Yay, so we have reached Yoyogi Park and we saw this guy walking like a shit ton of dogs. And Mel was so scared of dogs, so she was like, I don't know, on the other side of the park or something. So I think the Japanese here like to actually picnic under like cherry blossom trees. But this guy look a bit sad lah. The, the tree no flower then he alone. We saw this really pretty big puddle of water. I don't know it's from the rain or what. But yeah, you can see like the tree reflections and Mel looks so glamorous. 
our first cherry blossom and it's a small tree Yay. Hi, how are you? I don't know why she start to lick the flower <laughs> la. Maybe because she want to copy the dog Yoyogi was super pretty and calm and peaceful but it's a waste it wasn't full bloom We decided to get like a simple sweet snack so we stopped by this small cafe, cafe called Chairo. Cafe Chairo It's a super small cafe with a cat in it but we still managed to get this corner table all to ourselves we tried to take some aesthetic shots of the cafe and we made ourselves comfortable and cozy. I'm scared. I love you. Oh, you gotta touch my cat, right? But this looks calm. <laughs> <laughs> Mel is very scared of cat and dogs, but she actually warmed up. Oh, yes, so soft. Look at it, it's so pretty. And you see, Mel ended up trying to grab the cat's tail in the end. So we ordered two sets of dango, one matcha latte, and one red bean matcha puff. It was 2,700 yen in total, a bit expensive. Seven to eight. Mm. Yours worse. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, we rated seven We explored the streets near the cafe for a while. And then we decided to head to our dinner place which is 30 minutes away from Harajuku station at Idabashi station. We quite liked the area because it was much less touristy and there were so many fresh fruit stalls around. Omakasi! <laughs> we made an advanced reservation at Kasa Uokin, an Italian-Japanese fusion omakase. Yes, going all in in day one. And Mel went to reserve the table to, I guess, sit opposite me instead of booking the counter area to see the guy make the omakase. Hi, the menu was all in Japanese, so I mean, felt quite legit lah. And I think the menu actually changes from time to time if I'm not wrong. I tried this orange wine for the first time for 980 yen per glass and it was pretty good. And the first item has arrived. I think this is the vegetable mousse with some bread. I think you're supposed to eat the mousse together with the bread because the mousse tastes quite weird by itself to me. Then we had this sashimi, I think it's directly from Toyosu Market. Third is the fruit caprice. It was grapefruit and mozzarella. This fourth dish looked super good. It was sea urchin rice and salmon roll. This tasted as good as it looks. Super yummy! I like it. Then we had this sad looking tomato meatball. Six was an omelette egg thing. You can't really go wrong with egg. Seventh, we had some white asparagus. Then we were given some free sake. The waitress told us it was a present. But then I mean, we saw her giving it to every customer in the restaurant. So. The eighth dish was a nigiri sushi and yeah, I just put the whole thing in my mouth. The ninth dish was a bamboo shoot fritter. Dipping it in the chili paste and the salt was actually not bad. Number 10, we have smoked chicken wings. Number 11, and the food just kept coming. This was the clam chowder soup. Sorry, my Chinese is damn bad. <laughs> At number 12, we got this hand rolled tuna sushi. They like to garnish it with like the sea grape, which honestly tastes like nothing. The 13th dish was this pasta, and honestly, we didn't really enjoy the Italian aspect of this omakase. 14th, we got this fish. I don't know what fish is it. Number 15 already, but the food still kept coming. Okay, number 16, look like got dessert. Look like ending already. She was so nice, she also gave us some camel mouth tea. So I'm gonna have a good sleep tonight. And just when I thought it was ending, pa, she go and pa one whole pingsu looking matcha red bean thing on our table. 
But okay lah, can't complain. It was really not bad and it was like a refreshing end to the whole omakase. The total bill was like 9,100 yen per pax, including the wine, and we rated 8.10 overall. <laughs> we then went back to Shinjuku Grand Bell Hotel to like dump our heavy bags. And then we decided to go to the rooftop of the hotel. It's all free to just view the night view. We then decided to explore the nightlife around the area. And then we ended up at Kabukicho Tower, which I think is quite a new mall. But I heard like the food in the mall is like a tourist trap. But still, we went to check it out. The first floor had like a live band and some food and then we decided to go to the second floor where there's all the claw machines and whatnot. Mel here is like an anime, especially a One Piece fan. So we just stood here and like watched these two guys play some One Piece game thing. I think this red guy is like the main character but I just know that Mel likes the green hat guy the most which is Zoro. Someone please find her a boyfriend ASAP. Then she decided to waste some of her money on this claw machine to catch Zoro. But okay la, the claw machine, like the black claws look quite reliable. Oh my god, it's center Okay, I guess it's not reliable. To be honest, the live band on the first floor was like super entertaining and vibey but it was just a shame that we couldn't understand Japanese. But yeah, see it looks so fun. We then decided to walk to Omoide Yokocho which is like a narrow alley with bars and drinks and yakitori but we got lost along the way and ended up on this overhead bridge which actually has a very nice view of the Kabukicho road. And yay, we finally found the place and we really enjoyed actually just walking through the narrow alleys. We saw many locals and tourists in the small bar and yakitori shops just soaking in the night atmosphere. But yeah, we didn't really try any bar food because we were so damn full from the omakase. And that wraps up our first day in Tokyo. Good morning, it's day two. Day two? It was a nice weather with pretty blue skies and we decided to go and see the Godzilla head. Yeah, so there it is, the head. Then we decided to take a morning walk all the way to Shinjuku Gyoen Garden. But things didn't turn out the way we expected it to. The area was like super crowded and we were trying to find a line to queue for the tickets. We have a mega L today because Prior reservation to go to Gyoen. Yeah, sadly it was all sold out, but okay lah, I don't think there was any cherry blossoms in bloom anyway that day. We then decided to grab an early lunch at Shin Udon, but their online ticketing system says that we could only get like our seats at 6 pm, so like, huh? So then we decided to eat at this Sukiman place instead called Fuji, and I'm so glad we did because it was so good and it was like my first Sukiman experience. So this is how it looks like when we enter So we actually have to kind of wait behind those people sitting and enjoying their food Which Mel didn't really like because she felt very pressured to finish her sukiman faster And don't make the same mistake we did So we ordered a special dipping noodle And then we also added like egg and roast pork So in the end like we had like double portion of pork So it was like damn a lot of food You see got double portion of eggs some more <laughs> Yeah, so just order the special dipping noodle by itself. Don't add anything else. We a bit gong gong la. The noodles in Japan are like extra QQ and nice. And the miso dipping for the sukiman was like super good. I really love sukiman. And I would rate this place like 9 upon 10. Even though I got nothing else to compare to, but it was so good. And the price was 1,400 yen per person with all the added pork and egg. Now we are leaving for our day trip to Kawagoe. It was a 1 hour 10 minutes train plus bus ride from Shinjuku to Kawagoe and Sukiman can actually give you really bad food coma so we really just like slept 
on the train. It was great catching up on our sleep and before we knew it, we finally reached the place. We have arrived. Kawagoe Station. Now we're taking a bus. Now let's appreciate a short lipstick commercial by Mel. And yes, we have arrived and now we're just making our way to the warehouse district area. There were many traditional shop houses, there were people also dressed in kimono and there were rickshaw riders and good looking ones. And yes, we have reached the warehouse district area and we were quite shocked because it was actually super crowded. This traditional looking Starbucks blended in so well with the surroundings but of course when we went inside, it looked like the normal typical modern Starbucks. We then saw the Toki no Kane, also known as the Bell Tower, which is a historical landmark in Kawagoe. It is 16 meters tall and it chimes four times a day at 6 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., and 6 p.m. We were really spoiled for choice, but we finally settled on ordering a donut from Omiya Chobe. It was just 80 yen for one donut. <laughs> We rated like 7.8 a point 10. We then went to check out Supika Foods Spa Tea Room. We had to first walk through the souvenir shop before entering the tea room. I was surprised that it wasn't really crowded and yeah, I guess you just sip tea while soaking your feet in the water. In the end, we decided not to dine in here. Because the weather was quite hot, we noticed many people ordering this cucumber stick. And look at this friendship, three of them were helping to take photos of this girl. It was nice exploring the streets and exploring through confectionery shops. Mel decided our next stop for dessert at Sawawa. This shop specializes in matcha green tea sweets. I got a matcha ice cream cone and Mel got the matcha ice cream with some mochi. The cone was 660 yen and Mel's one was 710 yen. We rated 8.5 a point 10. There were also very cute Mifi shops and we also checked out like some chopstick making shops. We then ventured out of the main street area to explore like the nearby neighborhood and it was much more quiet and peaceful and we just took like photos and videos of each other. And yeah, it's time to head for dinner. We are going where? To um, some beef plates. Yeah. Um, I'm still so Do you know? What is that what it's called? Oh. Do you know it's beef? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't realize. It's not green. I think it's Niku. Niku is wrong. <laughs> too no, wrong. I think it's Niku. <laughs> the correct answer is Gyu Niku. <laughs> Mel is wrong. This place is called Wagyu Hitsuma Bushi Kawagoe Ushikawa. I think because it was quite early for dinner, so we were quite suspicious because like the whole restaurant was empty and we were the only ones. Hey man, we booked the whole restaurant! <laughs> yeah, but just after us, the customers kept streaming in. We both decided to get the beef Hitsuma Bushi set for 2,700 yen each. There were two kinds of beef, roast beef and charcoal grilled beef, and both were very well seasoned. Just me removing the wasabi. At the end, they told us to leave some rice and pour in the minced beef, seaweed and add the soup stock. Overall, it was a really good meal and we really enjoyed our experience and we rated 8.5 a point 10. After the beef, Mel is satisfied. <laughs> we then went back to Shinjuku and we decided to check out this Shinjuku baseball cage. The batting cage really looked quite new and we were quite apprehensive at first because it's like our first time baseballing. Yes, but after empowering each other, we decided to just go ahead and buy the three games for 1,400 yen. The baseball bats are lined in order of weight and we just found the lightest that we could find. This whole experience was so fun and we ended up purchasing another three games and my left call ate the next day but it was so worth it. This is a must try at Shinjuku. After that, we decided to check out Golden Guy. So Golden Guy is much bigger than Omoide Yokocho but it's also like a similar concept of narrow alleys of bars and drinks. Nothing really caught our eye so we decided to just get out of there. We ended up in Kapukicho area again and we saw this like creepy looking person at the window. 
We checked out another claw machine area but it didn't look as good as Kabukijo Tower. So we went back to Kabukijo Tower and look at what Mel is doing. She has not given up on catching Zoro and she's been trying and trying multiple times. Try twice, uh, try twice at least. Fail! Fail! And then try again. And then fail again. Okay, but Mel has not given up. She has just gotten more confident. I don't know why. But after four tries, Mel has finally succeeded. Okay, like she spent like 20 plus dollars on these, which I think quite worth instead of buying from outside. As usual, the energy was going crazy downstairs. It's day 3! So fast! And we have a video bomber. Our first stop today is Shibuya. So Mel overdressed again today. To Shibuya, Mel is very hot. So freaking hot. We decided to first go and check out the Mega Don Don Donkey. Mainly to get the 10 yen coin. There were multiple floors to explore and there it is, the 10 yen coin. We decided to share one of it, which is 500 yen, which to be honest is quite expensive. Not him cutting away the sides, which is actually the best part to me. But okay lah, it needs to look round and neat like the 10 yen coin. So after we got it, we went out to take with the exterior of the Don Don Donkey. The photo angle here is pretty nice. And we were just having fun trying to see who can pull the longer trees. Yeah, we were just being like public nuisance. Actually, the whole trip we were public nuisance, but who cares? After <laughs> we walked around the streets for a while and decided to get some sushi at Uobe. We were quite early, so we were almost first in line. We got our table numbers, and yes, look how empty it is. This is like a super affordable conveyor belt sushi place, so we just ordered whatever. Made some green tea for myself and I ordered like I think Tobigo, scallop, tuna, salmon, the usual. Mine. The sushi quality here is not super super good because I mean it's quite cheap. So yeah, it's just affordable conveyor belt sushi. I just got six plates in total and it was 1100 yen. I rate it like 7.8 upon 10. Yeah, then we went to cross the Shibuya crossing a few times and went to check out the Hachiko statue. We then went to Shibuya station to get this free vantage point of the scramble crossing. Mel then decided to buy the Tia Tia Cushion Foundation since there were good reviews on it. And now we are heading to Aoyama Cemetery which is one of the places for cherry blossom viewing. A few trees were in bloom but sadly this whole road was bota. Yeah, but we just appreciated like those specks of trees that were flowering here and there. And the whole place was very quiet and peaceful. I mean, what am I saying? Of course, of course it's quiet. So hot. Yeah, the weather was super hot that day. And now we are at Ropongi. There was this big ass spider and we could see Tokyo Tower from here. We entered the mall and we decided to grab another round of lunch because Mel found this good tonkatsu place online. This place is called Butagumi Shokudo. It wasn't very crowded because it was after the peak lunch hour and we got this cozy seat by the cooking area which was great. We each ordered the premium pork, the rosu katsu for 2,080 yen. We were served the cabbage and the pickles first. Then we just admired the chef's knife and frying skills as we waited patiently for our food. Yes, that looks like ours. Yum yum yum! I was still having a sore throat at this point but I didn't really care and the waiter was just explaining like what dipping sauces we can use for the pork. Cheers! Time to dig in. I love just having salt as my dipping for both pork or beef. Not really of the sauce kind of person. The batter was super fresh and crumbly and I still tried the sauce dipping but in the end, I still preferred the salt. They served us Japanese tea at the end and we rate this place 8.7 a 10. 
Now we are walking to Tokyo Tower. <laughs> Tokyo, Tokyo Tower. From? We're, We're from, from Singapore. Oh, from. <laughs> 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 yeah, Mel always seems to be very high without alcohol. And yes, there it is. And look at this <laughs> belly dancer, so graceful. <laughs> there were many vantage points to take pictures of the Tokyo Tower, but I feel the best spot is to go to Shiba Park. It's a very peaceful park, and as you can see, many people are just like picnicking here. Yeah, we just sat here for a while to chill and then we headed for dinner. Back at Shibunya at night, getting some yakiniku beef. Because girl, Mel likes a beef. <laughs> Mel likes a beef. We went to this place called Bebuya and little did we know that they had a buffet option. They had a la carte option too but we decided to whack and just go for the premium Japanese Wagyu buffet for 6,589 yen net. We started ordering, we ordered like beef tongue and all the most premium cuts to make our money worth. It was only up to A4, not A5 beef. But no complaints, it was super good to me and we were just happily stuffing our faces. Yay, the beef looks so good, I'm like salivating right now as I'm looking at this. The buffet also came with some dessert which was not bad. Overall, we rate this place 8.5 upon 10. And now we're just heading back to our hotel. End of day three. <laughs> we were just packing all our luggages because we'll be checking out of Grand Bell Hotel tomorrow. We'll be venturing out of Tokyo City Center going to Karuizawa and Kawaguchiko. So stay tuned for part two. She wants to eat everything. <laughs> 